Hi, so in this video I want to give you a quick overview of Magi. This video is no fancy, no frills, it's really designed for my clients to be able to get going with it as quickly as possibly, as quickly as possibly, as quickly as possible, uh, and to try and explain the, the underlying logic and features. So when you log into Magi, this is what you'll see, the dashboard. And there are a few key um, features. The first one is workspaces. And what I want you to think about workspaces, it's a little bit like if we brought somebody into our business, work, the workspace is how we're going to do the induction. It's how they learn who we are, what we do, who we do it for, why it matters. So if I click on workspaces, you'll see I have one meaningful workspace. If I click on the edit button here and scroll down, you can see there's very little information here other than the knowledge files. And here I've added a document w with some information about my writing style, um, a document simply explaining to the AI who I am, what I do, who I do it for. And then another document that's simply telling the AI who my ideal client is, who I would normally, who I would like my content to appeal to, essentially. So that's the workspace, that's the induction content, if you like. The next key feature is personas. And where the workspace might be induction, persona is the job specification. It's who are we hiring, if you like. So here I have some standard personas that are included with Magi. And then I have a couple that are just mine. Uh, so I'm going to go into Social Media Bob. If I click on Social Media Bob, you'll see these are the instructions. When you turn up at work to work for Bob, this is your job. You are my social media content assistant. This is telling it, the, the AI of all the vastness of space, this is its job today. Forget about everything else. And this allows it to really focus its efforts and efficiencies. And I'm telling it, you help me create content mainly for LinkedIn because LinkedIn's my main platform for this persona. I'd like you to create uh, the first paragraph of a post, post to have some emotional impact uh, and focus on catching emotional attention because that's what I want the first impression to do. Uh, avoid any cliches and superlatives and so on. Uh, just a little bit of instruction about how I would like it to write. Um, focus on UK English. Avoid the long dash, use short ones, and then a standard footer that I'd like it to include in the posts. I've given it very little information here, and that's because this first line does the work. The AI will read this and it will understand, oh, I'm a social media manager. This is for LinkedIn. This is a little bit of information about how Bob wants his posts formatted. I know what to do now because I'm a professional. and I'm a world-class social media manager. I'm the omnipresent AI. I don't need to tell it how to do its job. It knows. I just need to tell it what its job is. So we can give further information, but we're not going to. And that's it. So we've created a workspace with some context. We've created a persona. We're now ready to go. So if I click on chats, you can see my old chats here. And a point to note is I can add folders for these chats. I'm going to create a new chat. Now, you could jump in and start doing things, and this general assistant persona is quite good, is, but it's a general assistant. You might want to flip it to your specific job role persona. And then here you can also choose the AI model you want to use. You can play with these, experiment, there's no right or wrong. Um, personally, I get great success with DeepSeek. Claude is also very good. And you can also let Magi's AI choose which AI it's going to use if you want. One point to note is the usage. If you use the automatic one, one word will cost you one word of your allowance in Magi. And Magi's billing is based on a word allowance. If you use DeepSeek, each word will cost you 0 0.01 words. So it's very cheap to use. That's why I like this one doesn't cost me very much to use in terms of my allocation. Similarly, NVIDIA Nemotron, and NVIDIA is the company that makes all the chips that power AI. 
their own AI model is very good. But I like DeepSeek. So now we know the job role, we know the, the, the language model, and we know the workspace. And the workspace is selected down here. So now we can simply type in a prompt, and it doesn't have to be that complicated. I could simply write a post about best practice using AI to amplify your personal brand. So I could pull the trigger on this by sending the prompt, but I could then ask AI to enhance my prompt. This is something I've just discovered. and My eyes are still watering. It's that useful. So AI is going to read that prompt and it's going to augment it. So it's now created quite a long post uh, prompt from that. So I'm just going to pull the trigger and I'm going to get it to go. So that's pretty good. Um, I would often give my prompt a lot more information. I usually write a paragraph of two in order to give it some good orientation and then it will just go. So there's a couple of more features that we need to look at here. And they're over here in the right hand column. So I have some saved prompts here that I use, oh no here, that I use on a fairly regular basis. So I have prompts for creating a transcript from cre creating a, what's that for? Creating a video script from a transcript to short form video edit. So it will take a transcript of a podcast episode and turn it into a short form video script for me. Um, I have another one that does my podcast show notes when I just upload the, audio, the, the transcript. Another one that creates titles for things. Um, and so on. So there's lots of prompts that I can use again and again here. Similarly here, I can save it to a folder and I can give the, the chat a, a name that means something to me. But more powerfully, down here at the bottom, I can copy the what it's generated. And at the top here, I can create a document and I can paste it in here and I can begin editing it. So I don't have to go to Word or any other place to, to refine my post. I can do it all in here now. Um, similarly, I could flip my persona now to expert copywriter and say, please convert this into a story-based email for my list. and then it's going to go away and do that. I could have changed the AI model as well, mid-chat like this. So now it's gone away, it's writing an email. Now, again, I didn't give it very much information, but it's doing okay. Bum, bum, bum. So now I'm going to copy that. I'm going to, I'm going to paste this underneath. So now I've got my first drafts here all done and this is how I want you to look at them. These are not finished products. These are simply first drafts that an assistant has created for you. You're now going to have to come through, cleanse this, sanitize it, check it, and give it character most importantly. Um, it's so important for your personal brand and your ability to connect with people that when they read your content it really feels like it's coming from you. Um, that's one of the benefits of setting up your workspace is that you can give it samples of your writing in order that it will, it'll understand you. I've, can, I've toyed with things like adding my personal manifesto, but it took it too literally and it got carried away. So less is more from a workspace perspective and a persona's perspective. You don't need to give it too much, but by training these two elements a little bit, you'll get great results very, very quickly. And being able to work in the document here um, and also save your prompts, it does allow you to move very, very quickly. And here, the enhance feature.
for your prompts is very useful. So you can write a little, enhance the prompt, check what it's offered as an enhancement, pull the trigger, and it will do a wonderful job. Um, you can also do images in Claude, uh, Magi rather. I do sometimes, but I, I'm, it's not my personal style to use a lot of AI images, but I do do it from time to time. So to quickly recap, workspaces, that's your induction. Personas, that's where we need to give clarity about job role. And prompts is our saved prompt library. Those are the three key features here. And over on the right hand side, you can have a working document. Again, your saved prompts are there. Um, chats, I don't know what that's all about. Oh, you simply have access to historical chats here. And then the, the document information for the whole chat. That, I think, is everything. And this is what allows me to move faster with content creation than I've ever done before.